Welcome to Garden Valley Church Podcasts. We are so looking forward to having you join us today. Welcome back to Highway of Holiness. I'm your host, Audrey, and I have one of my dear sisters here with me today, Brandy Blankenship. She's going to be sharing some of her journey and her story with one of her children. Welcome aboard, all listeners. This is going to be an uh, intimate chat today and a uh, really kind of a, a story and a, a topic, that's what I want to say, that's not always talked about. Not You don't hear a lot of topics like this that we're going to talk about today uh, spoken of very often. And so I really hope that this message does get out. If you're listening and this really touches you today, please share it. Please share it with others, um, other parents, other moms and dads that are going to want to hear this message. So Brandy and Chris are my dear friends. I love them. I'm trying to think of how long we've uh, been doing life together. It's been a while. Seven years? Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Yep. You guys, so it was about seven years ago you started coming mm-hmm. to church. Seven years ago um, was actually my first encounter with you at Starbucks. Okay, I was going to say, mm-hmm. I remember having ch- uh, coffee at Starbucks. Yeah. Why don't you share? So I was um, going through lots of um, lots of things at home with Chris, d- my spirit, just there was a lot of spiritual battles going on and I was just supposed to meet you um, for yeah. compassion team because I had just kind of gotten involved in the church and I wanted to um, be involved in the compassion outreach, which yep. was like for to reach out to homeless and all yep. of those things. So yep. um, I went there thinking that was <laughs> that was what it was yep. for, but God had other plans. And yeah, we were going to talk business. We were yeah. going to talk about ministry <laughs> and her coming on the team. Yeah. And I remember the Holy Spirit saying, like, it's not going to be so much about compassion team today. Like, yeah, I really, well, I didn't know that. <laughs> I remember it clearly. I was like, wow, okay, this is a divine appointment uh-huh. and you're going to move God. And I think I remember hearing, you know, just some personal things like marriage things. And I was like, oh, yay. I got excited because I was like, wow, God, you, you want to move today. Okay. Yeah. And you also said that you had seen Chris at baseball fields and you heard God say to yeah. you, I'm lost or something to that. He seems like he's, he looked like he was lost. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so as soon as you said that, I was like wrecked. Yeah. Pauline. And I'm like, okay, this is, we are not going to talk about anything else today. <laughs> And yes. that was the start of Chris and I's journey yeah. to healing and, oh, you know. God is so good. Yeah. And I knew Chris from high school. He was mm-hmm. about more closer to my brother's age. My brother's five years older than me, but he went to our high school. And so I hadn't even seen him, I think, since like high school time. And I saw him at the baseball park just not yeah. too long before we had had coffee, yeah. which is so funny how God works. But I do remember something. <clears throat> I heart. My heart mm-hmm. ached for him when I saw him. Like, oh man, he there's so much more in him. Like, mm-hmm. there's so much more life available for him, and there's so much more inside of Chris. And he was just, he looked like he was kind of wandering through life. Yeah. Yeah, we kind of both were. <clears throat> but I had a little more foundation because I had been going to church and and getting fed um where in in parts that that had been shut off for a long time. So yeah. Um, and how old were your kids at that point when we had? So Isabel, <clears throat> sorry, I have a cough. <laughs> it's okay. Isabel was, um, so that was seven years ago. So Layla was two. Oh, wow. Isaiah was five and Isabel was 15. Yeah. Wow. Now she's going to be 23 in May. Wow. Next month. Yeah. Wow. So. Isabel is their disabled child. She has cerebral palsy, palsy mm-hmm. right? Okay. Which we're really going to be talking about today and this powerful story and their journey uh, with having a disabled child. And again, things we don't hear about and really um, the journey and the life of a family that's caring for a disabled child. Mm-hmm. And so I really hope that there are some listeners today. Again, if you're listening, please share this with maybe someone's going to come to your mind that needs to hear this message, a mother, a father, a family, and maybe even grandparents that care for a disabled child. Yeah. Yeah. So um, 
<clears throat> I'll just kind of give you um kind of when maybe it all started now was she even expected to live to 23 oh absolutely not wow no she wasn't even expected to live beyond the hospital wow. it was like a you know chris and i had not been together for very long before i got pregnant um and this is your firstborn that was our first i was 20 chris was 22 and we <clears throat> had only been dating a short time and uh, I got pregnant and we knew that we were going to have a baby. There was no question. I didn't believe in abortion, but you know, I, it was up to Chris if he wanted to be involved or not. And he definitely wanted to. So good. We did it together. I have epilepsy. So I That's was right. on medication throughout my pregnancy. I trusted the doctors. You know, yeah. that's what you do. You yeah. trust the doctors, especially when you're young. Yeah. I didn't have a phone to Google things and to to figure out, like, is there going to be any problems with my medications? Or So I left it up to the doctors. I sure. trusted them. Yeah, and, we're supposed to. Yeah. And so um, ultrasounds, everything came back normal. I, I had no no idea. Wow. I thought throughout everything the whole... was going to be throughout the whole pregnancy. Wow. Even after her birth. So, wow. um, you know, I had a difficult delivery, but to be honest, I, I kind of have a little bit of, um, confirmation from Holy Spirit that it, it definitely wasn't the delivery. Um, I was supposed to be put on vitamin K uh -huh. because the medication I was taking depletes my body of uh -huh. vitamin K Uh huh. and the baby takes up a lot of our vitamins too. Yep. So, yep. um, vitamin K stops bleeding. Oh, okay. So um, my body is depleted of vitamin K. The doctor knows this, and the doctor doesn't put me on supplements. Mm. And I had no clue. Wow. <clears throat> so she was born. It was kind of traumatic, the birth, but it, but she came out screaming, crying, you know, and it was my beautiful baby. And so your body was lacking vitamin K vitamin K and you said the doctor knew this and yes she did and did mm -hmm. she talk to you about it at all no wow I didn't find out until after Isabel was born her nurse the doctor's nurse and I'm not going to throw her under the bus yeah. because yeah you know, yeah she'll have to she, I'm sure she's still dealing with it yeah and, and that's yeah. okay yeah. I um but the nurse reached out to me and privately and, privately wow and said, I just want to let you know that this is what happened. She was supposed to put you on vitamin K. It's in her charts. Oh my goodness. She knew. And if you need me for any reason to back you up, to testify, because she was already like, you need to sue her. Wow. She, she wow. majorly messed up. Wow. And she was, she was probably kind of angry for you. You know, there was like the yes. justice that rose up in yes. her and she... She reached Definitely. out to you. What a brave, that was brave yeah. move by her. So when um, Isabel was, you know, I, I kind of tried to block out mm -hmm. that portion of my life wow. for a long time. Yeah. But Chris remembers everything. Wow. Because I would, I was in and out of sleep. I was up all night in labor. And mm. um, I don't remember if it was the doctor or Chris or someone who said she doesn't look right. Something's wrong. Mm. The doctor said her head was getting the baby bit big. Isabel's head was getting wow, and then she started to go into convulsions. In like your, I said, I'm womb. Before. No, after she was born. Oh, so she was anywhere from twelve to eighteen hours. Chris okay. could probably tell you better because okay. he remembers that part of it. Yeah, they put me on volume. I was gonna say you were probably a little foggy. Because I was freaking out. What like, I this? freaked out, and Judy told the doctor, can you please give her something? Because I I oh, was wow. traumatized. My daughter is having convulsions, and nobody knows what's wrong with her. And mm. um, the doctor didn't know what was wrong with her. And, and so um, there was another doctor, a young doctor, luckily, <laughs> and I still love her so, so much, um, who came right in. She did a spinal tap and saw that there was blood in her spinal fluid mm -hmm. she was having a hemorrhage wow a, br a brain hemorrhage uh -huh. <clears throat> wow. and so 
she found that she stopped it. She stopped the bleeding, but the damage was already done. Um, and they flew her down to Medford because there's no NICU at the Roseburg, right. which is really sad. Yeah. Because, you know, we have a lot of people who yeah. need that NICU. Yeah. But yeah, they flew her down to Medford. And like I said, I was... <clears throat> I was out of it because Judy was like, you need to take this. And they gave me, mm -hmm. I don't even know how I got there, but I was in Medford. So you went too? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're probably like, I'm not going without my baby. My yeah. baby's not going without We me. all went. I mean, yeah. it was like an army of us. And Wow. And this is like 12, 14 hours or so, 20 hours in? After she was born. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did you have a natural birth or a C-section? Natural birth. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And... Um, immediately, like when you're a mom, you start telling yourself, what did I do? Yeah. We blame ourselves. We carry what guilt. What did I do to, yeah. to cause this? This is my fault. What did I yeah. do? I, if she, if I wasn't, if I didn't have epilepsy, she wouldn't have been born like this. You know, all of the, instead of thinking clearly, mm -hmm. all of that. And, you know, thinking back, it was, I think, um, I didn't have a foundation. I didn't have God, really. Yeah. I knew who God was. Yeah. I was raised in church, but yeah. I did not have a relationship with God. Yeah. And so all the fear. Yeah, of course. And the doctors did not help. Wow. <laughs> and they said, basically, you know, um, we could do the surgery, put a shunt in her head. It will drain the spinal fluid um, into a, like, space in your abdomen, her abdomen. Um, so her head doesn't get any bigger, but the damage is done and she's never going to be anything past like an infant. Mm. Mm -hmm. She'll grow and she'll look like she's normal or I, I hate to say normal because yeah. she's normal to me in a lot of ways, but she'll look like she's, um, a normal child, but mm -hmm. she'll have mm -hmm. all of these things, right? And Chris and I, I was still in so much doubt and so much fear, but Chris was really clear-headed. Wow. And love that. And um, this doctor was like, well, if you leave her here, we can put her in a home. Um. Or you can take her home without the surgery and just let her pass away with your family. Oh, my gosh. And so in my mind, I'm like, okay, she's going to die. And wow, maybe we should just take her home. Wow. You know, and wow. Um, I'm young. I'm just a 21-year-old. Yeah. And Chris is a 23-year-old. We're not married. We barely even know each other pretty much, you know. Wow. I love um, when you said Chris was really clear-headed, knowing uh, Judy and their story and the family. Mm -hmm. she, they fostered mm -hmm. many, many children. And so I think about that backstory, mm -hmm. you know, and the things that he lived through. It was kind of a little bit of a setup. Like he yeah. kind of, I think some things shifted into gear, being around younger kids and watching his mom, his mom, mm -hmm. Judy has cared for yeah. so many children, and I think disabled <clears throat> too. Um, I thought well, there that was... she she was an adult foster care. Yes. Um, after she was a, you know, the, regular the small... foster care. Mm -hmm. Yes. So they had a lot of experience in yeah. the home with caring for people and all yes. those things. So it, I just feel like some things probably kicked in inside of both of them. Yeah. I she, I mean, it was. They were all a lot more clear headed than I was. That's for sure. And, uh, and it's you're the mom. It's different. <clears throat> like this is your baby. Yeah. That you've been carrying for nine months. For nine months. She was just part of me, and, and perfect. Mm -hmm. Had no, no signs or any inclination that something might be wrong. No, none. And her body was perfect. It was just wow. Her brain. So um, we went back to I don't remember where we were staying. I think we were staying in a hotel, or we went back and. Um, we talked about it, and Chris tells me, which I really don't remember much of it, that I was like, okay, let's just take her home. And he was like, no. Wow. We're going to take her. We're going to get the surgery done, mm -hmm. and she's going to be, we're just going to deal with it. We're wow. just going to, whatever comes, we're just going to figure it out. And 
we had so much support. My mom, my dad, all my brothers, mm. everybody, all, my, all our friends mm. was in that hospital. We like overtook that hospital. Mm. And um, wow. But you, did you have any faith community at that time or anybody no. praying? Wow. My mom, my mom was um, doing a lot of praying and Judy too, but we weren't. Our friends, the, the people that we were around, they we just weren't involved in in church, involved with people who were godly people. Yeah. It was we were so doing a lot of ungodly yeah. things. Obviously, yeah. we were not married and yeah. had a baby. Yeah. But the doctor, when he did sit down with us and told us all these things, he's like, I we called him Doctor Death because <laughs> he didn't have any good news, right? At all, right? It's, no good news. Yeah. Wow. And he said, um, I just want to let you know that parents of disabled children, the divorce rate is 75 to 80%. Your doctor's telling you this? Yeah. Okay, I don't like this part. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah. is bothering me a little bit. Like, it's that seems like overstepping your bounds yeah. and you're spewing negative news on a couple that's already in trauma. You guys are in trauma. You're in crisis. You're young. Well, and I think that's what... The point was, he was looking at us, and we're young, and we're not married. And that was another thing he said, and you guys aren't even married. Wow. So the likeliness that you guys are going to be together is very slim. Oh, my goodness. Do you think he was trying to you to maybe? Let, but was he also maybe um, encouraging you to let the baby yes. go? Yes, oh. very much. Wow. Very much so. Wow. Um, Because he just didn't think we could handle it. Wow. And, you know, children like Isabel, she's a child to me, but yes. she's an adult now. <laughs> but children like Isabel end up in homes. And that's kind of what I I feel like I need to talk about. Yeah. Because there's a lot of families out there that are going through a lot of guilt and a lot of shame. And they are hiding it. You know, they don't yeah. want to talk about it because... Yeah, families that have had to put their mm -hmm. children in homes. Yes. What do you think that is? Is that a large amount, like a majority? Or do you think it's kind of half and half? I think it depends on their circumstance. Um, I was lucky. Yeah. Because I had... A, a support system. A support system. Yeah. And Chris and I eventually got married. Obviously, it's been 23 years. <laughs> 24 years in May that we've been together and yeah but most people don't yeah and you have your your mother-in-law and your mom mm -hmm. you, before you had your mother-in-law and your father-in-law before your father-in-law yes. passed recently yes um but so you had so the grandparents just all hands on deck is that yeah. how it's kind of yep. started yep I and love that not not a lot of parents have that mm -hmm. and not a lot of parents so single moms they have to work they have to go and work full time. Yeah. I even had to work full time so I could have insurance for Isabel mm. because I wow. She had so many medical things that I couldn't I couldn't not have insurance for her. Right, right. Wow. But so you're forced with having to work, yeah. but yet you your heart is like I need to be at home with my baby taking care of her. Wow. Yeah, and then Judy, what if I didn't have Judy? Yeah. What if I didn't have my mom? My mom did move away. So I, for a while, all I had was Judy mm. um, as wow. a support. Wow. And, you know, all my other friends have their newborn babies, and these babies are walking together, and mm -hmm. they're doing all the baby things, and Isabel was mm. not, mm. you know. And mm -hmm. I'm so mm -hmm. I felt like even though at the moment I had a lot of help, I really felt alone. Yeah, for sure. I I really felt alone, and yeah, and for parents who don't have support, and they're working full time, and they're going, how are, where are we going to put our child? Because you know, Isabel, you can see her disability. Mm -hmm. Some of those kids, mm -hmm. you can't see. Mm -hmm. When you look at them, you don't know they have autism. Mm -hmm. You don't know how bad their ADHD is. Yeah. You don't know how bad their depression and mental health is. Yeah. All you can see is the outside. Yeah. And so a lot of parents who, you know, they can't be there 24-7 for their, yeah. their children are stuck with that 
facing that um, decision. Yeah. Where where does our child go? Where does my child go? I love my child, but I I have other kids too. Mm-hmm. So and I I've known a few mm-hmm. um, a few people who've had to face that decision, and I know how hard it was, and I know there are people that judged, you know, because they just don't understand. So um, I have a few thoughts on my, on my mind. I think some things that you can bring to the listener. Um, some practical, some maybe a little bit more spiritual and just supportive. Like, what would you say to listeners? I mean, maybe there's even some parents, some moms and dads uh, that have literally just gone through this. Like, the the place where you guys are in crisis mode, she's born, you guys are in Medford, and all this news is coming at you. You don't even know what to do. And then on top of it all, the doctor is steering you Mm-hmm. away from even letting the the child live. Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, so I don't know. I kind of want to speak to that. And maybe you can encourage some listeners that either, have either gone through that, been in that same place. Um, <laughs> maybe even there's some that are guilt, uh, carrying guilt on one side of the coin or the other. Maybe they listen to the doctor. Mm-hmm. Maybe some aborted mm-hmm. because they were encouraged to go that route. Yes. I'm even thinking of that. So I don't know. Maybe I just feel your mama heart to just encourage some um, that have gone through that same place. Um, I Before I had Isabel, I probably would have been one of those that judged. Mm. Wow. Um, I, I probably would have. Like, how could you put your mm. child in a home? Mm. How could you make the decision to abort a baby just because wow. there's something wrong mm. with with it that you may think that you can't deal with? Um, I would have been a judger. Wow, <laughs> wow. And uh, and I know that. And, and, and maybe many others still are, and they absolutely. don't even realize it because they don't understand the journey. Yes, and I, I know your sorrow, and I know your pain, and I know your shame. Yeah. Because even though I didn't choose death, I didn't choose to go that way. Yeah. The journey has been so hard. Yeah. And and I I I know how hard it is to make that decision. Yeah. And all the regrets. Yeah. All the I should have done more. I should have tried it harder. Yeah. I it's so much of the enemy mm-hmm. telling you all of those things, but a lot of it is just the place where you're at. If you're not spiritually in line with God's word and what God says about you, mm-hmm. then you're going to allow that shame to just yeah. overtake yeah. your entire life. Yeah, And I just had recently a understanding of things that I have kind of buried about myself and about shame surrounding this where Mm -hmm. people look at me and think I'm the strong person because I have a child that's Mm -hmm. disabled, but I didn't choose this. Wow. Yeah. And God didn't choose it for me. Right. Someone who didn't do their job chose to to put me where I was, but God had plans to use it for his good. Amen. And Amen. I didn't understand then. Yeah. I And, and some yeah. people that don't have yeah. that foundation, that don't have that understanding, yeah. will be going, well, why did God let that happen to Isabel? Yeah. If God's so good, he didn't allow that to happen to Isabel. But he uses everything he can. He uses my voice mm-hmm. just like now Yeah. to to bring awareness, to bring yeah. understanding, to, um, you know, yeah. the things that Chris and I could have gone down a different path. Yeah. And yeah, we didn't. We yeah. stayed together because of Isabel. Yeah. I was going to say, I love how God 
you know, in, in the <laughs> darkest place. <clears throat> Would you say that was probably one of your darkest places? Absolutely. Yeah. In the darkest place, God shines a light mm -hmm. and says, no, I'm going to use this for mm -hmm. my good. And I believe, I believe you guys are kind of at the, almost the beginning of something new in this area, in this story. Um, something Brandy and I were talking about earlier, which is for every single person, whether you have a disabled child or not, the, the beauty and the grace and also the power of owning your story. That And a lot of times it's that darkest place. It's mm -hmm. that place that you don't think God can use. It's a mm -hmm. place you really don't want to talk about. How do you talk about this? That is the place that God wants to use. And a lot of times, like Brandy said, it's a place where you feel shame um, and where the enemy tries to hit you the most and tell you, you know, lies, basically, that is the area that God wants to use the most. And so I do believe to every listener, there's an invitation today to pick up your stones, to pick up your story and your testimony. And that dark, and it's that dark, darkest place, but God mm -hmm. came through and shined a light. It's like Job, the story of Job. If you're a believer and you've read the book of Job, um, it's a story of sadness and stripping. Job lost everything. But that at the end of the book, <laughs> God shows up at the end of the last few chapters, God begins to move and God begins to speak and shine a light. And then out of it, Job goes, wow, Lord. And this is a righteous man, a man that knew God, mm -hmm. but out of it, God's, uh, Job says, wow, God, I thought I knew you before, but now I have really seen you. So it's actually, an, it was an invitation to encounter God's goodness and encounter his faithfulness. And so that dark, that dark place, that darkest place, that maybe you're going through it right now, maybe you're in a dark season, this is an invitation for God's light to come through, to shine and do his best work, his greatest work in those darkest places, and to invite you into an encounter to know him and his goodness, his power, his mercy, his grace, uh, his supremacy, and just how good and faithful he is, that we can go through anything. We can go through any storms of life, any setbacks, any circumstances, and we can still have hope in Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's, um, and also in, in Job, you know, there's people that try to discourage him just like people discouraged me. Um, mm. why, yes. Why would, you see, you see your God, why would he let this? Yes. And and I, I really like, you know, the stones, they have a shirt that says, even if. Mm, yes, and that, Shane and Christy Stone, the whole family yes, has a shirt. And that yes. is so powerful because mm -hmm. even if, you know, we went to a Benny Hen when Isabel was like oh, five. Wow. And I was like, even though I didn't have a relationship with God, I still believed yes. that he had power. Yeah. And um, I saw Benny Hen just healing people and it was... It was amazing, and so we got tickets, and we went to Portland, and we went to Benny Hinn, and everybody's going on stage to get healed, and we're like, okay, we have Isabel, and we're going to go up there, and she's going to get healed, and the people that were going up there were people that could, were deaf or blind mm -hmm. or um, had a walker that, that couldn't walk, but mm -hmm. now they can, and they could speak about it, mm -hmm. and they could tell their testimony. Mm -hmm. But Isabel mm. couldn't tell her testimony. Right. And so it was almost like they were choosing yeah. who they wanted to bring yeah. um, for uh, healing. And so that mm. wrecked me. Wow. I was like, is she wow. not um, good enough? Is there not a place for her? Wow. God, why? Why would, you know, and, and all those doubts come rolling back in, like, when you don't have that foundation, when you don't have that relationship, mm -hmm. it's always blaming mm. God for things that are that 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 are happening when we really should be looking to God mm -hmm. to fill those those places of doubt and mm -hmm. um, um, uncertainty yeah. and yeah and the questioning yeah. and you know just like I was saying with Job. You know, they were all trying to discourage him. His friends. And he basically yeah. said, even if yeah. like, God is still good. Yeah, he kept standing on God's goodness. Yeah. And um yeah, so yeah. I, I think that, you know, anybody who has children with disabilities, uh mental disorders. Mental 
you know, they're, they're going through addictions yeah. and yeah. You, you have shame or hold shame because you think that some of that is your fault. Or if you were a better parent, they wouldn't have to go through all this suffering. Mm. I just encourage you yeah, to on. talk about it, to yeah. find a group where yeah. you can say, this is how I'm feeling and, and I don't know how to change this mm -hmm. because once you can open yourself up yeah. and say, I, I, I need, I need something. I need yeah. healing. Yeah. You, you're going to hold on to that. Yeah. And it's going to be that dark place where yeah. you have spiritual battles. Yeah. And God doesn't call us to, to, to be alone. Yeah. That's in right. our, our pain Amen. and suffering he calls us for community. That's right. That's right. Is there, I was thinking about this earlier. So this is one of the other thoughts I had for, um, moms and dad, is there any support groups and locally, or even that, you know, for people with disabled children, like yourselves, like when you and Chris were going through all that? No. Wow. No. Um, there is like on social media, you know, yeah. there's groups and stuff. Um, but I have my, my group, I yeah. have my support. Your church family. My church family. Yeah. And my family. Wow. So, um, right now I, I would have needed that back then, Yeah. but now I have, I have that. Yeah. But for people who don't, yeah, that's a good place to start. Um, church. Yeah. And start your healing and, yeah. um, yeah. I I just I just hope and pray that people will mm. step out of that shame mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and taking on mm -hmm. responsibility for things that aren't Yeah, you don't have to carry the guilt. It's not your fault. Um and then um maybe you also were listening and caught that place again about like some of the doctor advice that Brandy and Chris got. And you knew or you're sensing even now that it's just not right. You didn't have peace about it. I want to encourage you that that peace, that uneasiness actually is Holy Spirit speaking to you. And Holy Spirit can speak to believers and non-believers mm -hmm. alike. So you don't have to be saved to hear God's voice. Mm -hmm. And so I believe that uh, the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. And I want to encourage you to use your voice to reach out. Um, you can even reach out to Brandy directly yeah. on social media. Uh, fit, you're on Facebook yes. and Instagram. Um, yeah, what an opportunity for ministry, yeah. too. I And I I, I I see the pain. Yeah. Even though it's hidden, I, I feel it. I know. Yeah. yeah. I've been through it. I've walked through it. And it's yeah. stormy weather. Yeah. It's not easy. And um, mm -hmm. and I just, I don't want anybody to walk that. You know, at um, I was at a women's conference this last week or two weekends ago. And a lady was talking about her daughter passed away and that she just didn't know how to move forward, you yeah. know, and she kept doing more things. Yeah. If I do more things, then, um, then everything will get better. Yeah. And she said she was just like charging forward and she heard God say, just sit. Mm. I will meet you where you're at. Come on. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to chase after me. Yeah. Just sit in your sorrow mm -hmm. and I will come to you yeah. and I will heal. Yeah your soul and your spirit and your heart and yeah. you don't have to keep chasing i'm already here and yeah. so that Absolutely. really encouraged me to not keep chasing after healing when it was it's already available for absolutely me. amen he draws near the brokenhearted yeah and a lot of times healing is a process it's like an onion being pilled you know sometimes we have these encounters whether physical or spiritual or emotional and we we god meets us and heals us and does like these great advancements at an, in an encounter but then the bulk of our healing a lot of times is day by day week by week week it's a process whether it's emotional physical spiritual, whatever kind of healing that we're walking through, we're all in process. So we never yeah. arrive. Um, so would you say, uh, looking back, you know, kind of post giving your life to Jesus or fully surrendering, yeah. yes, you were a believer before, but then God intervenes in your life in, uh, when was that, seven-ish, eight years ago, would you say that there's such a difference? Would you say there's a difference between them then and before? 
before and now and how you even see that whole situation, how you see Isabel and all of that. Tell tell yeah, us about that. I, I definitely um, believe and I, I do believe there were parts of me that I was tucking away that couldn't be healed mm, because yeah. I wasn't exposed. I hiding wasn't, it. I was hiding it. Yeah. You know, um, there's that shame portion when people are like, oh, you're such a good mom and Isabel's so lucky. And you start, the enemy comes in and starts telling you all of these things like, well, you didn't do this for her and you don't do these things for her. Mm. And you see pictures on Facebook mm. and you're like, oh, well, I didn't do that for my daughter. Uh, I'm going, you know, so all of those, wow. the enemy uses it against you. And so now that I have a foundation, I can, I can tell myself yeah. that that's, that's the enemy's yeah, lies. That's right. I don't accept that. And I, I know I need healing and I know that I have trauma and I'm going to work through it because God's going to meet me. Yes. He's already here. Yes. And, um, for people who don't have a relationship with God, they don't know where their healing is going to come from. Yeah. Like, mm. how do I get healed? Mm. How do I heal myself? Mm. You don't. You need You need Jesus. God's healing. <laughs> you need you, Jesus. Yeah, He's yes. so good. He's so yes. good. And, and he will. He yeah. will walk with you, and he will start that healing process. And, yeah. you know. Um, we all need Jesus. All. We all need him. Yes. We all need him. We all have parts of our stories. We all have places of our stories that are painful yes. and maybe shameful. But God can lift that up. And like you said, you know, he shines a light. He began to shine a light mm -hmm. on that area that you yeah. were hiding mm -hmm. and to remove the shame and yeah. to remove the pain and to heal you and set you free so you can share and tell your story yeah. and help others heal. Yeah, it was definitely, um, it was very healing just to talk about it. I mean, mm -hmm. just a group of girls yeah, to like open up and say, no, I'm not all that strong. <laughs> yeah, I'm traumatized. I am yeah. hurt. And, wow. and God has, he has, I, I know that this isn't my fault. Like he's healed that part of me of, of blame yeah. on myself. That's but right. But there's a it's part of me that's that I shoved away. God can't, help. he's like, you can't let me in and I can't help you. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, you've got to open your heart mm -hmm. and I will meet you yeah. and I will be there. Yeah. So, um, absolutely. He's so I did, I felt, I felt healing that day. Yeah. Like, wow, I, I've waited this long yeah. to, to open my, myself up and, um, praise God. I wish that I would have done it sooner. Yes. But um, for, for those, for any who, who are struggling and don't, don't know what you think about God um, and Jesus and, mm -hmm. and his goodness and his kindness mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. you know, why did this happen to me? Mm -hmm. And I encourage you to reach out to someone, reach out to me, yeah. reach out to someone in a church that you yes. know that they go to that church. Yes. And talk to someone, yeah. someone who knows and understands um, who God is, mm -hmm. who Jesus is, mm -hmm. and what their hope and their desire is for you. Mm -hmm. The 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 love that's given freely, mm -hmm. Amen. and and you don't you don't have to put on a show. You don't have to be the best. You don't have to be yeah. in the spot where you're okay. I'm ready to, yeah. to go to church now. Yeah, come with all your wounds and yeah, your that's your right. your pain and heartache yeah. and 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 find healing. Yeah, absolutely. Healing is available for you. And it's not just available for the one or the, the one next to you or mm -hmm. um, every single one of us needs healing. And truth is, even in that darkest place, a lot of times a, a lie we hear is God wasn't there. Where did mm -hmm. he go? Where was he? And it's when we encounter God and we see that he was actually there. He's with us all the time. He was there in the darkest place. He's there in the middle and he's there in the end, the beginning, the middle and the end. He never leaves us. Um, but it's in those places when we encounter him and see that he is good and he's faithful. He's always with us. He's a good shepherd. He's going to lead us through the darkest valleys mm -hmm. and he's going to see us through to the other side. Um, that we we find his goodness, we find his peace, and we find his power, and we find that we were never alone. And there's uh, power, and there's victory, and there's healing in that. 
I think of Psalms 23, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because your rod and your staff are with me. They comfort me. You know, that's his, his word and it's his Holy Spirit. He's always with us and we need him. We need him. Yeah. And um, who's to say uh, any of us are, we're, we're all going to probably walk through more dark valleys in this life because we live in a fallen world. So whether or not you've already walked through a dark valley or maybe you're com- going to about to walk into another dark valley or a storm, life happens, but we can trust in God, his faithfulness, his goodness, his peace, his mercy, his kindness, like all the things you just said. Um, yeah. And I'm just grateful that God, you know, held you guys. He held you. So much. He held you and held Chris. And I love hearing that part. I haven't yeah. heard that part about Chris, how he really stood. He's so strong. You yeah. know, even in the moments where I fall apart, mm-hmm. even now, mm-hmm. you know, with any medical things, he holds it together. Yeah. He really does. And and he's he's so strong. So if anybody is strong when it comes to Isabel, it definitely is him. Because, I mean, I can do all the other stuff, but when it's when it comes time where everything's falling apart, he's he's strong. And, and so we help each other. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you don't have that help, mm-hmm. gosh, I can't I really can't imagine how hard it it would be for for yeah. moms that are going through this or right. f- even fathers who are. Yeah. Who are single going yeah. through this. So. Yeah. So we just want to speak hope to you, moms and dads, and breathe life upon you and know that you're seen. We see you mm-hmm. and uh, you're not alone. Jesus is with you. And um, I just come against condemnation and guilt or shame that would try to tell you otherwise. And we just break that off in the name of Jesus. Is there anything else that you want to say? Um I had things that I wanted to say, (laughs) all the things, all the good things. You're doing great. You're doing good. um, It was kind of a, uh, what's a whim Mm -hmm. that, that I, I told Audrey that I, I wanted to kind of share a little bit of my testimony, but, um, I think it's the beginning of a new season for you guys. Yeah. It's almost like God has uh, opened this up the treasure chest yeah. for you. That's what I see. I see him opening up the treasure chest and saying, now's the time. Yeah. Take take out the treasure that you've had kind of hidden. Mm-hmm. And I know it's probably been kind of a process of that, but I feel like the Lord is saying, now's the time. Let's Let's take out the treasure. Let's do it together because there's people that need to hear your story and need need help, yeah. need he- healing, need support, need prayer. Um, yeah, especially the prayer part, because um, without all of the prayers that we've gotten, and mm-hmm. I mean, I feel them. Mm-hmm. I f- whenever she's sick or in the hospital, I feel in my spirit wow. the prayers wow. working and um, wow. and working in me, not just in my daughter, Yeah, because I need that also and wow. and I know that no matter how strong you are you're not wow. that strong wow you know your spirit's not that strong you can't withstand all this stuff on your own no you need someone or mm-hmm. something mm-hmm. and and for me and mm-hmm. for many others mm-hmm. that is god yeah and that is jesus's love and wow. i don't know where we would be without it wow i really don't wow chris and i you know, and, and there were times where we've gotten to a point where we didn't know, are we going to stay together? Are we going to be together? Mm. And he's brought that up to me. Mm. We've been through so much yeah. together, Brandy. Yeah. We have been through like the, hell and back. Yeah. There, there's nothing we can't get through. Come on. And, um, you know, when we did our vow renewal, I said, we are... The fifteen percent, come on, that made it. Yeah, I don't want to just be fifteen percent. Yeah, I want others to come on to stay and yes. and go through it together because yeah. it's so important. Yeah, I love how God reversed the script, like yeah. literally. Um, and I'm not trying to shame that doctor. <laughs> I really am right. not, but you know, he did spew some negative yeah. things there. 
And it was it was almost like a, a negative forecast, really. Whew, oh, I just, over a whole I just, life. Yeah, I just felt the chills. But it was like God's like, nope, watch me. And he yeah. reversed the script. And now, like you just said, no, we are the 15%. Yeah. You, re you uh, renewed your vows. Mm -hmm. God has moved and held you together. And he mm -hmm. has seen you through the storm, the darkest place. He's so good. Yeah. Yep. Even when, even now, when we have problems, and yeah. you know, all marriages do. Yes. I hold on to that. I know we're gonna get through this. Yeah. You know, this is hard. Whatever yeah. we're going through, but we're gonna get through this. Yeah. Yeah. Look at how far we've come. Yeah. Amen. And so, if you're listening today, and maybe you're struggling in your marriage as well, you're gonna get through this. Mm -hmm. We just pray that over you. You are gonna get through this. God is gonna see you through it. Hold on to Him. Cling to Him. Cling to the Rock, Lord God Almighty, the One who is faithful to lead you through some of those hard, shaking times. But He is unshakable. I agree. <laughs> you want to pray for the listeners? Um, yes. <laughs> so, so, dear proud Heavenly of you. Father, thank you. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we are just so, so grateful for your love, for your interjection into yeah. the thoughts that we might have, the thoughts that, that we tell ourselves, God. We are so grateful that you meet us where we're at, that you are there, you walk with us, even when we don't know, we don't. We don't want to feel, God, you are always there. Yeah. You were always there for me. Yes. I didn't know, mm -hmm. but you were always there. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm so, so grateful for everything you've done for my family. God, I pray for those out there listening who may mm -hmm. be going through trials that they don't think that they can make it through. Mm -hmm. They don't know how their children are going to make it through. God, I pray for those people that you will... You will give them hope. Yes. Because we can't, without hope, mm -hmm. we are so lost. So I pray hope over yes. you. I pray um, comfort and peace over you and um, healing. Come to the rock that will not move. It's yes. not a shifting, mm -hmm. the shifting sands. It's going to be your stronghold. You yeah. are going to be on a firm foundation. So I, I encourage anyone who is struggling, who needs that foundation, who doesn't know um, who God is, yes. to just reach out your hand because someone will be there. Yeah. I will be there. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you're interested in checking out more of our podcasts as they come available, please download our app in your device's app store or check us out on your podcast platform at Garden Valley Church. We look forward to seeing you next time.